Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelation. Zelda is 115 speaking. Let me welcome you to the Chambers of Tulum. Now this is a particularly interesting level that we'll be revisiting three times because it serves something like a central hub area purpose in the Cairo level. So it connects to the City of the Dead, which we no longer have to revisit because we collected second secret even without upgraded bike, but which you might have to revisit in case you want the secret and want to do it with an upgraded bike, which will be much easier. Uh, it also connects to the levels Trenches and Street Bazaar, which are then linked with each other. Uh, there we need to collect the components to even upgrade the bike in the first place. And it also connects to the level called the Citadel Gate, which we will visit now after the Chambers of Tulun, and also it will be the final level we will visit, closing the non-linear loop and leading us into the Citadel, the final level of Cairo itself, right? So. First of all, I really like this level because of its merger of different architectural styles and also I really appreciate the fact that uh, we are not being shot at. Well, not yet. The danger is right around the corner, so let's take care of that. Hurry, Lara. Okay, and let's get underneath the guy. Maybe you even noticed with your keen eye that there is a soldier on the ledge above us. And by now you know what I want to do. So let me actually choose poison ammo and attach the laser sight. Oh! And we are back to normal ammo. Interesting. So yeah, actually, I forgot to point this out. Make sure to first set the laser sight on the weapon you want and then choose the correct ammunition, poison or explosive on the crossbow because then it will reset back to normal, which can sometimes catch you off guard. So it's just a minor glitch I wanted to make you aware of. Thankfully, the soldier cannot shoot at us from here, but we certainly can. Right, Lara? Ah, thank you. Blood splatter. That's what I wanted to see. So while this is going on and he's throwing up all over the place, imagine the poison effect that I showed you, you know, back in the Karnak levels, except that it's not lethal. <sighs> They're so privileged, our enemies, goddammit. Uh, ad admire this. This is a European medieval construction, you know, uh, in middle of uh, Arabic city. So it's like a merger of modern and Middle Eastern and medieval European architectural styles all together which I find absolutely fascinating because this is a fortification built by the Crusaders back when they controlled the area. And we are actually gonna go inside and uh, we're gonna admire the architecture a bit from further on and climb into its roof. Now, it also plays an important role because around its circuit we can access the different uh, levels of Cairo, but also inside is where you can trap the big bad evil boss of this level. We're of course gonna kill him using a very interesting technique, but if you don't want to do that you can always trap him inside and outrun him and outsmart him, which is also very satisfying in its own way. But, you know, my walkthroughs uh, really focus on being completionist. Okay, by now you should be dead, thank you. Okay, and one thing I want to show you, we are going to make it across this bit on our bike. Let's ensure we have a really good run-up for that. Thank you, Miss Croft. Okay, there we go. Forward. And now, if you try and make this jump using these stairs, you will fail miserably. Rather awkwardly, actually. The thing is, uh, you can only do this jump if your bike is upgraded, right? So, you know, try as I might, you know, unlike I impressed myself in the uh, previous level, uh, doing a jump that you're not supposed to even without an upgrade, this one cannot. It's very straightforward, very direct, and, you know, if you use these stairs to really uh, position Lara correctly and you even grab the ledge on the other side, you then realize it's slippery. Now, uh, there are a couple of things I want to mention here. Uh, getting here is purely optional. You don't need to in order to get all the secrets or even to finish Cairo levels. You will find one key inside that unlocks a door in another level, but bypassing that door in the first place, it's actually even more intuitive than unlocking it in a really weird way, and I'll explain once we are there. But yes, yeah, so once you make it across, the door on the left will open, you can go inside. However, See this guy? He wasn't there before. You actually need to touch uh, the sandy slope area. If you make it like I did, you know, directly after making that jump over to the stony area over here, the beetle will not appear. So keep that in mind in case you want to avoid it. But I prefer to actually kill it with the bike, which is absolutely hilarious. Just squishing a golden plated bug with a bike. Oh! Talking about golden plates, let's take a look at it, actually. We have so few opportunities to admire Seth's monsters, so let's zoom in. 
Okay, that's not cute. That is absolutely terrifying. Imagine a swarm of these approaching your head. I would scream like a schoolgirl, really. This is terrifying. It's not my fault I'm not Lara, come on. Okay, so, what was that about squishing a bug with our bike? There we go. Ah, oh, damn it! It sometimes works. Okay, no, no fear, no fear. Uh, we can do one cool trick, and that is we need some elevation. Like that. See, use the slope against its advantage, and it will just be squashed like that. Like a bug that it is. Very satisfying, mind you. But it's even more fun to just run over it very quickly in a succession. When that works out, it's one of the most satisfying things ever. Okay, uh, optional detour I'm gonna take. You can take it later, or heck, even never. And that is, get inside here, and we are gonna take care of one enemy so we don't have to later, and just to recap our kill count during our first visit of this level. So, there is a door we need to kick down over here, which will lead to an almost empty room with a soldier. Okay, he decided to just take pot shots, not go full automatic, which is to our benefit. Okay, so you kill him, he drops nothing. Make a note of this torch, it will be important later on to open a couple of doors, because we will trick the fire alarm system into thinking there's a fire, and it will open emergency doors like this one, which leads to an empty, pointless room, or this one, which is actually way back into here from a different area, which will be accessible with an upgradable bike. Got that noted down? No? Well, that's too bad. So. I'm getting out of here, really, I just wanted to take care of that enemy to wreck up our Kion Count now and, you know, not have to deal with him later, and also taking full advantage of the um, health bar restoring properties of switching levels, just like that. Now, you can already, you know, take the bike ride over there and enter the next level called the Trenches, if you so desire, but I prefer to enter a different level called Citadel Gate first, because we are going to talk to a particularly interesting NPC. Uh, who's gonna explain more or less what our next objectives are gonna be, but in a 1990s video game janky kind of way that actually makes no sense. So I will do the proper explanation. Still, it just sets up the scene much better than if we were to enter the trenches first. We're gonna enter the Citadel Gate. Now, I intentionally left the bike here, because what I want to do, and let me test that, I want the bike to interfere with these tiles, and the fact that Lara cannot drop down means I parked it correctly. See, I cannot even walk towards the very edge. This means that the bike's hitbox affects this square, and that is very important. But first things first, let's uh, use this side of the ledge to climb up properly, because this leads into the first and only secret of the Chambers of Tulu. Oh, sorry, not the only, I'm lying. Uh, the first of two. Sorry, I'm confusing it with Citadel Gate, which is the level that's up ahead. Even though they're very different and difficult to confuse, I still manage. Ah, street view on the right, but we can ignore it's too tight for Lara to fit in. But secret on our left over here behind the corner. So let's just turn around. And again, this is a very, 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 very generous secret. I love it. It somehow reminds me of Thames Wharf, you know, the depressing uh, London interior construction side ish environments of those Tomb Raider 3 levels. It really is pretty much at this point just the SFX and ambient sounds that set it apart. I would really think we are playing Tomb Raider 3. And the lack of Lara's cat suit, of course, that's uh, that's to the game's detriment, I guess. And again, we can do so without a flare because we know where the street is thanks to the little window. And now I think Lara can stand up, right? Thank you, Lara. You can. You're a big girl now. Okay, so now I'm gonna do something rather controversial. Do you remember when I set out my mission all those years back when making uh, Tomb Raider 1 Let's Play that we are going to get our hands on all the items, all the kills, all the secrets, that sort of thing? And with keeping up with that spirit, I corner glitched my way through to that unobtainable large health pack back in Palace Midas in Tomb Raider 1. Well, I'm going to do something similar here in Tomb Raider 3. I'm going to use a glitch to kill the unkillable enemy. And I'm not sure if glitch is even the correct word, because we're not really gonna position Lara in any illegal spots or anything like that to confuse the game. It's actually all about luring an enemy to one of these tiles and then start up the bike, which will end up killing it. So let me explain before the badass music kicks in. If you try and go to the Citadel Gate over here and try to open it, you will be interrupted, oh, I don't know by a huge mechanical minotaur with an even bigger hammer. See, that sends shockwaves and deals a ton of damage. <laughs> by now, you know, this is Tomb Raider 4. Any 
gunfire is pointless, but so are explosives. Oh my god, the shock after effects single damage. Now, if you manage, you need to, I believe, pull it three times, that uh, wooden wheel, to open the gate. You still need to climb a ladder, from which he will knock you out using the shock waves from his hammer. So the way you are supposed to really overcome this obstacle, it's to outsmart him and lure him here into the actual mosque. And then close the door behind him. Holy moly, that's a lot of damage. I'm talking too much. Instead, what we're gonna do is kill the bastard. Oh my god, this is not good, but we can still make it. Okay, I think Lara should be able to grab this ledge. And now, using her sexy legs, let's just lure him into the correct position. Lara, seduce him. Make a seduction roll, come on. No, this is not working, Lara. The seduction skills are rather rusty. Okay, okay, that should be good. And now, just start the engine, and he falls down. No grenades, no poison, no other environmental hazards could have harmed this beast. But starting the engine on the bike will, because the bike's hitbox clashes with his. And the thing is, this Minotaur had a death animation. That makes me think he was supposed to be killable. Either that, or they just copy-pasted the moveset of a different, actually killable enemy, like the Cleopatra's Guardians from her palaces, into his. And yeah, so make of this what you will. Maybe to you this is cheating or exploiting the game's bugs and glitches. To me this seems really legit, because I'm not using any cheats. Heck, I'm not even glitching Lara through something. It's just we parked a bike in a certain way that caused an enemy's death. Either way, this was still challenging to set it up. We still took a lot of damage and I'm gonna consider it a boss fight successfully won. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna show you, if you don't want to do this, how to trap the Minotaur and do it sort of the legal way, okay? Now, if you want to do that, make sure you don't leave the bike over here, okay? We're gonna have to repark it back to the beginning of the level. And that's what I'm totally gonna do. So, let's just turn this thing around. And we are gonna make it back across the abyss, it's the only way really, because the other entrance is blocked. Okay, but it's not particularly dangerous or anything like that. And let's actually leave the bike parked in a very convenient spot, like this, this will do. Now, assuming the Minotaur is still alive, we're gonna lure him in and then we're gonna use that gap to get out of here, right? Uh, First of all, let me just take a couple of goodies that are on the floor here. So the more interesting one is yet another grenade launcher. And just like before, 11716. We will now be at 11726. Yeah, again, 10 normal grenades. And there's also a small health pack in the diagonally opposite corner. Now, in case you don't want to kill the Minotaur and want to trap him, make sure to pick up these goodies before you even get his attention, all right? Or her, I don't know, it's attention. Because uh, you really will be under constant pummeling of those hammers, which is something you probably want to avoid, unless you take great delight in that for whatever reason. Hey, I'm not judging. So, we need to get up onto the roof of this mosque. Uh, there we go, on top of the archway. Okay, and now the Minotaur is inside this courtyard with you, should he still be alive, because he sort of follows Lara around horizontally. He's not fully aware of her verticality and that's how we could use Lara's sexy legs to really lure him into the uh, tiles affected by the bike's hitboxes. Now you can call Mashimi here without problems, but it's the second corner that will stop you. I don't know why, you need to give Lara full uh, faculties of her arms and legs to allow her to do that. And do not release the control key prematurely, make sure the camera jerks around because that's when the game fully figures out Lara's new position. If you release it before the animation is fully complete, Lara will fall down at her original spot. Right? So the animation are really not always congruent with Lara's actual position in the game's world made of blocks and tiles. Now, see the rope? Oh boy, you know what's up ahead. But it's not gonna be that difficult. We're just gonna make a single jump from that rope. There's gonna be a bit more difficult jump due to which I'm gonna save, and I'm gonna recommend you to also save. So, again, the Minotaur is inside this mosque, inside the courtyard with us. What we're gonna do is that for about two minutes, we're gonna close the front and the rear doors, 
with this lever. It will re reopen in around 2 minutes and the Minotaur will get out. In that time, what we should try and do is close it, make it across there, use the rope to jump to secret number 2 over there, from secret number 2, jump on that ledge over there and then make it out. The problem is the enemies and items in between that really make this challenging. Also, once we get out, that's the reason I parked the bike outside, it will be waiting for us to make it across the abyss on the outskirts, all around this circuit and into the citadel gate entrance. Now, it's easier to show you what I mean rather than talk about it. So first of all, let's trap the deceased Minotaur inside, let's just pretend that he is alive. There it is. I wish only the big large door would close, not the small one, because then we could just, you know, go down and leave normally and it'd be too small for him to fit, and it would still feel good like we tricked the bastard, but there you go. That'd be too easy for Tomb Raider 4, wouldn't it? Okay, and now very quickly make it through the rope. I'm actually curious if we'll make it, you know? I'm challenging myself to do it before the doors will reopen. Now, if you're not interested in the secret, you can just, you know, tilt Lara fully to the right and make a jump to that ledge. But, come on, that wouldn't be me. So, one beetle down, and there's gonna be another one, but first, as part of this secret number two, white shots, rather useless if you ask me, and also a large health pack. Now I hear another beetle, there is some invisible barrier through which you cannot fully see it, but it's, <laughs> it's there, you know, you cannot see it, but it was there. I don't know what's causing it. And now, for one of the most difficult jumps, probably the most difficult jump in this game so far, I'm gonna make a safe, an exception. Now, make a running jump and then start tilting Lara. Yes! Oh my god, first attempt, I can't believe this, this is actually so difficult. Okay, and you sir, please kindly die. Okay, drops revolver ammo, totally worth it. Get that, no, Lara, a uh, large health pack over here and then slide down and then we will check if the door are still closed if yes then this is how you can get your hands on the second secret whilst trapping the minotaur inside the doors are closed perfect quickly you need to make it across the abyss now around the circuit with the minotaur still being inside i love the fact the music is still playing <laughs> this is nerve-wracking and go all the way around this is where you stop Lara, get out of the vehicle, thank you. Now go into the trenches. Okay, the double door is still closed, so the Minotaur would still be inside. And now what you need to do is turn this wheel three times should be enough. I prefer to do it four times just because, I don't know, opens the door fully. But yeah, if you do it three times or just hold it until Lara does it three times, you have enough time to enter. Now, if the Minotaur makes it here and you try to climb up, He'll knock you off with those shockwaves of the hammer, unless you climb like this. Ah, see? At this point, the game doesn't realize Lara is actually attached to a ladder, and the unique mechanic about the shockwaves knocking her down don't work. Again, one of the oversights due to the very short development time that the developers had. And this is a way back, uh, you can sort of slide back from this uh, pyramidic, slippery entrance. But yeah, so this is how you do everything you can in the first visit of the Chambers of Tulu. So you get both secrets and you can also kill the Minotaur. If you consider that an illegal glitchy thing to do, that's how you trap him and still get your hands on the secret without making another rounds around the mosque. Oh, fortification with mosque inside. And that's why you also park the bike there so it's ready and waiting for you. If you don't, then you need to wait for the doors to reopen, make it through the mosque and the mine tour here, get the bike, get it across the abyss, and then reset the whole procedure all over again. So, with that in mind, let me actually show you the statistics screen. This was our first and very action-packed visit into the chambers of Tulun. Seriously, my heart is racing. I'm so happy we did it through that strict time limit with the door still being closed. Uh, so we have found 10 out of 15 items, we have killed 8 out of 11 enemies, mind you that includes uh, killing that invincible mechanical Minotaur with our bike, and we have found all two secrets of this level. There are gonna be another two visits, one just to move across to the trenches level from the Citadel Gate, and another to get our hands on some uh, final goodies and kills, which is only possible with a fully upgraded bike, unfortunately. So with that in mind, let me actually make a very successful safe over here. 
uh, actually over here this was where i saved you to the jump and i will see you guys next time in the citadel gate where we'll finally learn what's going on <laughs>